Near Bleden was a little place down by the riverside. No longer there the house is gone, but memories aren't denied. The folk who lived there were a clan and always held their own. They lived their lives with fortitude, not one was left alone. Well, the proper name is Bladen Hoffs or Bladen Hoffs, and the Hoff is um, a low lying riverside meadow, um, which is what this is down here. Um, but everybody knew it as the Spike. And uh, there are various stories as to how, how the name came about. One of them is that there was a spike of land ran off towards Leamington, um, quite a distinctive spike of land, um, where there was a U-bend in the river known as the Leamington U-bend. But when the river was improved um, by the Tyne Improvement Commission, that U-bend was taken out. It was known as the Cowan Cut, and uh, the spike of land was lost, just became part of Leamington. So that's one possibility for the name. Another is that um, there was a lot of um, manual workers uh, lived on the spike and some lived at the Spike Castle, turret house, which had been made into tenements. And some of them were Irish labourers who probably came over after the potato famine, I would imagine. And um, I've heard it said that a, an Irish slang term for a boarding house is a spike and that they gave it the name. With terraced rows, not much to view, just basic, that was true. Yet home sweet home to those inside, just gassing outside loo. And by the river was Hogsfield, where children used to play. While nearby, in the factories there, the spikers toiled all day. Well, the Spike was an interesting place, um, unique, I think. Um, I got to know it through my parents, who both were born on the Spike. Um, my mother was born in Patterson Street, um, and her grandmother had the shop on the end of Patterson Street, which was Ray's shop. And my dad um, was born in Townley Street, um, and he used to bring me down when I was a, a youngster to his mother's um, and that's how I got to know the place I wasn't born here but I come to appreciate it, it was quite a special little place um, a little community sort of on its own on the riverside uh, I don't think the people were very well off but it was a very close knit community You could go and hoot and leave the doors wide open and there was nobody would go in in fact when, when um, factories used to be on a bit be at time they used to play a pitch and toss on uh, Cowan Street. And uh, they used to get the, uh, the young ones, like yourself, on a bike to run up, go up to the bottom house and stand there. And if the police came down, run back down and tell them so they could dis disperse. Spike itself was a separate a separate place, you know. Uh, we, we call them the Spikers, you know, and uh, that's... That's what they were. They were they were on their own in in the sense that uh, they had their own little place. And everybody else had their little place. There were many characters on the spike, and they all had their nicknames. T Cake was quite an athlete, and in later years, I think he ran with the uh, the rings off the pigeons from pigeon racing to where the machines were, where you clocked in. So, um, it's because he was the quickest. That's T Cake. Um, I've heard of a character called Sausage. I don't know anything about him yet. My Uncle Ronnie was Scon. They all seem to be named after foodstuffs. My Uncle Ron was quite a good drummer. Um, and he was a well-known local character as well. He worked in the clubs and uh, in dance bands as a drummer. After a hard day's work, they didn't mind a, a pint of beer. And if you see behind me here, the white building, that used to be the uh, bottle house. And the space behind that uh, used to be where Douglas Brothers were uh, making uh, trucks and cans for uh, the pits for putting the coal tubs in. I do remember when my dad worked there, uh, my mother always brought me down when I was younger before leaving school and uh, we would stand at the main gates till my father came out with his pay on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> that was to make sure he didn't get into the pub anyway. <laughs> Cowan Street 
was a wide street. We used to play football in the middle. And then there was another place uh, opposite Douglas's, what you call the score heaps. And that was just in the open ground right next to the rail railway. And uh, that's all they did, that. Played football and that. And like, we know when the kids, you, you lay, like paper chips, but what we did, you uh, ran around and you draw something on the wall and you had to follow that, you know. But apart from that, it wasn't really what you could do because it wasn't out there. Yeah, this is um, Smith Patterson's factory wall, part of the old wall. And the reason I recognised it is I came down here a few years back and saw the goalposts. Um, they're a bit faded now, but they're still on the wall there. And the cricket stumps painted on the wall to lower down there. And uh, I do remember from uh, my dad bringing me down that um, two of the streets that were opposite here, which were Cowan Street and Victoria Street, um, had quite a wide gap between them where the youngsters played football and other sports. I remember they really used to go at it and take it very seriously. And then what? Down the room with the raggy pants, short pants. They couldn't afford good players then. One of the businesses or factories is you went off the spike towards Bladen, was known as the chemical company, Bladen Alkali and Manure Company. And um, on cold winter's days, when they were walking up the spike on the way to school in Bladen, they would warm their hands on the, uh, the walls, on the stone walls, apparently they were very warm. Everybody knew everybody, you know, it, it was a typical factory. You had uh, a combination of uh, Winlayton lads, or Bladen as it were, and uh, the spike as well, we all worked together. Uh, and it was split up into different industries, like, you know, the, the, the tub shop and the other shops where they made uh, all different things. Uh, I do remember that uh, Swan, Swanee used to call him, he was on the steam drop hammer and um, if you happen to leave your uh, pot of tea, the can, on his side by an iron, uh, on his hammer or anything like that, there'll be a sudden bang and that was the end of your tea bang. Like, you never went near his hammer. Well, I worked for uh, Thomas Tench and I used to get work from Patterson's. I used to go up the uh, sand quarries and bring sand back for them, for their moulds. And then I used to take their uh, rubbish away from the furnace, that uh, what they call slag, when they used to clean the boiler, uh, furnace out. A dirty job. It was more muck. In fact, if you're eating your bait, you're eating more muck than what you're eating your salmon in the dust. Oh. Another story I've heard is that uh, the railway sidings that were um, over on the far side from here, there's quite a lot of spillage of coal from the trucks. So, I mean, the people didn't have much. They would scavenge coal from the track side. And if people were ill or elderly and couldn't help themselves, they would give each other a bit of coal, see them through the winter. There was a great community spirit, even though I think they had hardly any two pennies to rub together, you know. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it better then than what it is now. It was a good community. You never get the same community now. If you're now next door nearby, you're lucky. Where before you knew everybody. Gonna go down to Bladen Hoffs, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Gonna go down to Bladen Hoffs. The riverside, but I ain't gonna see the spike no more. Gonna see Townley Street no more, see Cowan Street no more. Won't see the dear old spike no more. Gonna see Victoria Street no more, Pioneer Street no more. Won't see the dear old spike no more.